sorry everyone, I need to talk with my mother. I'm sorry, Mom. I'll improve my GPA to 4.0, publish four essays, take eight AP courses, and practice the piano for 40 hours a day for the next academic year. Okay, I am Mia Chen, a ninth grader here at BIPH. As you might have seen, my mother is really strict about grades and academic performance, and I'm guessing that your parents are like this as well. Typical Asian parents can be very complicated. They generally emphasize academic success, working hard, and the respect for authority. My mother is the best example of what we call a tiger mom. The name tiger mom has become a term used to describe typical Asian parents. They are like tigers that would devour you in seconds without hesitation. They have green eyes and an expression full of anger. I remember my mom always told me that if you don't score an A on every single subject, you're not an Asian anymore. She says, like in the car, you're an Asian, not a Bijan or Asian. My mom and all of the typical Asian parents, they generally emphasize and expect you to do well in math and assume your brain contains a chat GPT that can pull out any equation at a moment's notice. They expect you to be an expert in physics and to learn a hundred different kinds of instrument to be perfect. I know it's exhausting, right? So um, problems, about parental, problems about parental relationship are common in Asia, just like in every other part of the world. Recently, I conducted a survey about adolescent parental relationship. All of the students and the parents included in the survey were of Chinese heritage. All the students were enrolled in international schools between 8th and 10th grade. And all the parents were of the same household as the students. The questions in the survey were designed to measure the grade disparity between students and parent perception in regards to their personal relationships. The results, of course, were quite striking. Surprisingly, 56% of the parents say that they almost never scold or hit their kids. However, over half of the students answer that they are at least sometimes scolded or hit by their parents. With 20% of the students saying that their parents always abuse them or even beat them in front of others. Moreover, 92% of the parents say that they have a really good and warm relationship with their children. However, 56% of the students say that they don't really have a good relationship with their parents. To further investigate the great disparity between their perceptions is the question regarding spending quality time with each other. 97% of the parents had the desire to spend this time with their kids. However, 30% of the students outright refused to spend time with their parents. Why is this data so distinct? Well, it shows a clear problem of miscommunication and misunderstanding. I myself have experienced numerous traumatic events during my childhood, and the main culprit, of course, was my mother. I had just graduated from elementary school. I was 12. It was nearly my birthday, and I was told that I would celebrate my birthday with my mom and her friends. Of course, I had no interest in doing so because it would be super embarrassing to celebrate for my birthday with my mom and her friends, all above 30 years old. So I rose against my mother saying that I would celebrate my birthday with my friends. However, my mom tried to suppress this rebellion by arguing with me. I tried to prove my point that her proposal was depriving me of my independence. I used my perfect logical thinking and debating skills. Well, perfect in the mind of a 12-year-old. All I wanted was the time with my friends and an apology. 
to be heard. However, this debate became a battle that soon escalated into a field ruined by nuclear warfare. We never come down. We never try to be more objective, and we never try to consider another point of view. One year later, we found ourselves talking about our past disagreements, and we came to an interesting conclusion. What we wanted was to solve this problem instead of pr putting the problem away and fighting against each other for nothing. She admitted that she, what she wanted was my company, but she never said so. And I realized that she didn't mean to control me. We found that people tend not to say what they want directly, expecting others to understand our thoughts, even though we don't say anything. Several months ago, I experienced another, well, let's say, a traumatic situation. And I'm sure that most of you have gone through. I accidentally lost my AirPods. I fell apart emotionally because my life depends on music and headphones. So I spent the entire afternoon trying to find my AirPods. I looked at the floor, messed up my bed, and pulled out every single drawer. But my AirPods were not there, so I broke down. And I told my mom about my miserable experience, and she said, I didn't cherish what I had. These words added to my emotional breakdown, so I sharply replied, why are you saying that I don't cherish what I had? I don't want to lose it either. So the nuclear war happened again. Of course, as a result, we're both sad that day. And when we talked about this argument a few days later, we found that this resulted from miscommunication again. She was unaware of my emotional breakdown, and I never know what I said to her would make her sad and frustrated. From these experiences, I realized that the questions were not about right or wrong. They're all about communication. We're both right, and we both have our valid reasons. But for some reasons, we are still arguing and are unable to see from the other side. So how can we address problems about misunderstanding and miscommunication? I found that people tend not to say what they want directly, and we expect others to understand what we are thinking or feeling. But if we don't actually share our daily life with them, they will never know. People haven't evolved to remind yet, right? So both parents and students must be more direct when they want something. This will make the conversation and the problem solving process more effective. By taking the time to understand how others think and how others feel, we can not only have a more comprehensive understanding of the current situation, but also the ability to think objectively. This will make the problem solving easier for us. Moreover, by actively listening to others' opinions, we can show them that you're really putting the effort forward into solving these situations and improving the situations. So they will be more willing to solve the problems with you instead of aimlessly arguing. Not only does actively listening to others help with day-to-day -day situation, having open communication can also benefit children in the long term. Parental relationships are vital for children's future development. Only even if only for a short, short term, an unhealthy parental relationship is likely to negatively affect children's emotional well-being. For example, a large number of high, high school students are currently depressed because of an abusive parental relationship. Moreover, for long term, however, an unhealthy parental relationship is likely to change personalities of children, including the development of mental disorders, especially borderline personality disorder. People with borderline personality disorder do not have the ability to regulate their emotions, and therefore, they are unlikely to develop healthy relationships with others ever again. A 2022 study by Hospital Del Mar Medical Institute examined 93,000 cases of adults who had experienced childhood trauma before. And the researchers found that the risk of developing mental disorders especially borderline personality disorder, 
is 15 times higher if one had experienced childhood trauma before. With these serious consequences, both parents and students must not only recognize the importance of having open communication, but also need to be willing to put forward the, the effort into building a better relationship. So, I implore you to go now and take the first step into building a better relationship with others. I am Mia Chen, and thank you for listening.